Out of all the eras of Sonic the Hedgehog merchandise, the one that fascinates me the most has to be the Sega Sonic the Hedgehog era. There was a time in Japan where in the early to late 90s, Sonic was always referred to as Sega Sonic, one word. I'm not exactly sure why this was the case, and this was solely a thing in marketing, with the exception of some notable arcade games. But yeah, every piece of early Japanese Sonic merchandise was under this Sega Sonic brand. Let me tell ya, the majority of this Sega Sonic stuff falls into the wow that is so cool territory. For example, check out these Sega Sonic shirts, or maybe you'll be more interested in these Sega Sonic vs Metal Sonic appliances, which I just so happen to own both the scissors and glue container of. Yeah, okay, maybe the products themselves aren't really cool, but the style and aesthetic of the Sega Sonic brand is something that I really love. Definitely my favorite classic Sonic style. It all takes a lot of cues from both the early artwork of Sonic, as well as these iconic pieces popularized by Sonic the Screensaver. To be fair though, the most interesting thing released under the Sega Sonic brand, to me at least, has to be the plushes. Yes, tons of sets of Sega Sonic plushes exist. There's of course the set everyone knows, the original Sonic Sonic UFO Catcher set, the one with the various Sonics, Flicky, Pocky, Eggman, etc. That set actually came out in two variations, one released in 1991 which is where the famous Stringy Sonic plush is from, as well as the more common 1992 re-release, which gave all of the plushes slight redesigns, as well as introducing two completely new Pose Sonic plushes. However, that's not the set I'll be talking about today. While that set is incredibly important and I will be talking about it in a future video, there are a ton of other obscure less known Sega Sonic plush sets that I just need to make videos on. For example, there's this awesome Sega Sonic sports set, which rocks a nice basketball Eggman plush, several Christmas sets, a karate slash festival set, etc. However, the set that I chose to cover in this video is none other than this set, possibly the most obscure Sega Sonic set. I rarely hear anyone talk about it, which is a shame because there are some pretty legendary plushes in this set. In fact, the set doesn't even have an established official name. I've heard people call it the Sonic and Friends set, but let's be honest here, a set this special deserves a more fitting name. Given the plush's party theme, and the set image's background, my friends and I have always called this set the Sega Sonic Celebration set, so let's go with that. And with that said, welcome to a look back at the Sega Sonic the Hedgehog Celebration plush set. The set contains five plushes, a set of Sonic and Tails holding flower bouquets, a set of Sonic and Tails wearing sweaters, and Amy Rose. This is actually the first ever plush of Amy. Yeah, definitely a very odd set, but this is exactly the type of experimental stuff I love about the Sega Sonic era. This set was released in UFO Catchers in 1994, and apart from this set image, that's really all we've got in terms of history for the set. However, the fact that we actually have this set image is kind of incredible. See, a lot of the Sega Sonic sets have really poor documentation. Sure, we know they exist, but barely anything past that. We do have set images for most of the sets, but they're almost all in very low quality, except for a few, including the one for this set. This set image, along with the one for the 1992 set, were uploaded to Twitter by Chris Beniak, founder of the video game Infemera. I have no idea how he found these images in such high quality, but in any case, it's amazing to see them like this. I really hope he has more of these saved. I'd love to see the set images for other sets in this quality. But anyway, that's really all the history to this set there is. So, let's start looking at the plushes themselves. Let's start this showcase off with these two gentlemen. It's Sonic and Tails holding flower bouquets. That's a sentence you will only hear in a video talking about Sega Sonic plushes. These guys are so great. They're both wearing bow ties and are holding very elaborate flower bouquets. The bouquets look really nice. The flowers are made of felt and are layered. You can see a lot of glue holding them together, which, given the age of these, I'm surprised hasn't deteriorated yet. But yeah, they look good. The base of the bouquet is a light green color, and the whole piece is held together by a sturdy piece of clear plastic, which the characters are holding onto. The ends of the bouquet also have this red ribbon tied to them. The tie on my Sonic's bouquet is a little undone, but Tails's still looks perfect. Sonic and Tails' arms are both positioned to hold the flowers, though they do crush the bouquets a little in doing so. Let's talk about these bow ties. Now these look really good. They're a shiny material and look pretty realistic, they're comically oversized, and look well put together. Okay, these plushes definitely show their age. My 
my Sonic is actually on the verge of losing his nose, as now it's only attached by a few loose strings. I have to be really careful with this guy to make sure it doesn't fall off. I'm sure you could repair it, but it's still really sad to see. Sonic's eyes here aren't nearly as good looking as they were on the prototype seen in the set image, but they still look fine. The whites of his eyes do look a little big though. The eyes on these plushes are made from this smooth rubber-like material, and they do have the shine details. Obviously plastic eyes would have been better, and that's what future Sega Sonic sets did eventually start using, but these work fine. They do curve a little and definitely could fall off if you're not careful with them, but they look good. His muzzle is well patterned, and even correctly curves upwards at his nose as it should despite it being flat. As for Sonic's mouth, this Sonic, along with some other Sega Sonic plushes that do this, are some of the only examples of Sonic with a centered mouth that I actually think look pretty good. Sonic's mouth is usually depicted to be at the side of his muzzle. However, here, I think it looks cute and totally fine. Tails' face also looks really good, even better than Sonic's. They nailed Tails' cute factor here, and as such gave him big eyes and a nice smile. His nose is made of a hard plastic, as was standard for Tails' plushes at the time. His cheek tufts are made from a thin piece of felt. They can get bent really easily but look good. He is missing his chest tufts though, probably due to the bow tie being in the way of them. Their ears look fine. They're really flat, but get the job done. The insides of my Sonic's ears look a little faded, and they aren't sized that well as they do take up most of his ear, but they look fine. Tails' ears, however, look great, and the insides, while deteriorating just a little bit, look really good. The insides of the plush's ears use a hard felt material, which keeps their ears upright. This is an interesting design choice I've only seen on these old Japanese Sonic plushes. Sonic spikes look pretty alright. He has all six of them, but they aren't really all that stuffed well. Same for his back spikes and tail. Though, to be fair, clearly the goods are on the front of the plush anyway, so the back doesn't really matter too much. Their bodies look as good as they need to, nothing too special about them. They incorporated these plushes' special additions really well though, and positioned them perfectly. Or maybe not perfectly for Sonic. As I imagine the reason my Sonic's nose is falling off is due to the plastic holding the flowers brushing up against it over the years. Tails is holding his very well though. One of the best aspects of these plushes is their simplicity. For example, their hands have no finger details and basically look just like mitts. Kind of reminds me of the Sonic R model in a way, which is always a good thing. And that's fine because the whole style of these plushes is very simplistic and I think that's charming. A lot of new Sonic plushes try to be as accurate as possible or put the plushes in poses and that's good and has its place, but sometimes all you really need is a simplistic Sonic plush wearing a bow tie. Tails' tails are really floppy but look perfect, especially the transition from orange to white fur. They also come to a nice tip as well. Their socks are simple white pieces of felt that are just glued together, but they look fine. Their shoes are almost perfect, though Sonic is missing his buckles. Let's compare the final plushes we see here to the prototypes we see in the set image. Like I said before, Sonic's eyes are very different. I like them more on the prototype as like I said, they're sized a lot better. The main difference though are the flower bouquets, which use a completely different shade of green here than on the final plushes. Everything else looks about the same though. Here's a look at the set's tag. It's basically just a generic standard Sega Sonic tag. There is nothing too flashy about it and it just uses standard Sonic 2 art with the standard Sega Sonic the Hedgehog logo. It gets the job done. Though I do wish these Sega Sonic plush tags incorporated the more flashy style we see on other Sega Sonic products. I assume it was mostly just a cost cutting measure though. Here's the set's Tush tag. It has blue Japanese characters on it that roughly translates out to Sonic and Friends. Okay, I guess that is actually the official set name after all, but I'm still gonna stick to the celebration set. These two aren't perfect, but given the fact that they're really old, cheap UFO catcher prizes, I can completely understand their shortcomings. These guys are great. Just like the rest of the set we'll get into shortly, these guys have so much appeal and charm to them. They're such classy looking Sonic plushes. As for rarity, like a lot of the older Sega Sonic plushes, it's almost impossible to place a price on these given how infrequent they show up for sale. I got my set of four for just over $60, so it's not like they're extremely expensive, they're just really hard to come by. There aren't really any tips I can give when looking for these guys, as they really just show up whenever, though they do show up a lot more often on Japanese auction sites than sites like eBay, and they're a lot cheaper when they show up there too. I've won this set and pretty much every other Sega Sonic plush I have from Yahoo Japan so I suggest looking there for them.
Now guys, I regret to inform you that this set of Sonic and Tails wearing sweaters is going to be left incomplete here, as I only have the Tails plush. I got them all for a great price, so I'm not complaining, but it is unfortunate. The listing for them is long gone now, but I remember the description mentioned that they were one from a UFO catcher, and that the seller had had them for years and years. So there's a good chance the seller I got these from got them directly from the UFO catchers in 1994, and that's really cool to me, and makes having these even more special, knowing I bought them from someone who had first-hand experience of winning them in arcades in 1994. I take it they just never won Sweater Sonic. No worries, we thankfully still have pictures of him we can go by. He's your standard Sega Sonic style and Sonic plush, wearing a green sweater, which probably makes him up there in the top tier leagues of Sonic plushes. It's a shame I don't own this guy, and hopefully I can get him someday. However, given the age of these plushes, they must be very, very hard to find. Who nowadays is just going to have a sweater Sonic plush lying around? Definitely not many people. And that's the case with so many of these guys. Who has the Sega Sonic Tails slippers? Or who has the mysterious winking Sonic plush? Plush, possibly from the 1992 plush set, which we only have one image of. See, there was just so much old, obscure merchandise released during this time, that unfortunately, there's probably no way we'll ever know for sure all that's out there. One thing you'll notice about Tails, and this applies to the Sonic as well, is that they're sitting. His legs are connected to the front of his body and shoot forwards, though he doesn't really sit up well on his own. With some crafty balancing, you can pull it off, but usually you have to balance him on something. Just look at how amazing this guy is. It's a sitting Tails plush wearing a light blue sweater. Honestly, they probably could have stopped releasing Sonic plushes after this one, cause clearly this is the peak. His face looks just as good as the flower tails, as do his tails, arms, legs, etc. One very cool detail about this guy is that if you lift up his sweater, you can see he does have his white chest fur. Obviously, he doesn't have his chest tufts, but this is a detail they could have skipped given the sweater is over it. Again, Tails' hands and shoes look really good. There's really not much wrong with this plush. And honestly, how could you even begin to criticize a Tails plush wearing a sweater? I really hope that one day I stumble across the mythical green sweater Sonic plush to not only complete the set, but also to complete this iconic duo. Cause Tails just isn't complete without the accompanying Sonic. He definitely looks very nice on his own though. This is exactly the type of stuff you can only find in the Sega Sonic era. Nowadays, apart from some select Joy Polis plushes and the Toy Network seasonal plushes, we never really see any Sonic plushes wearing clothing. Sega is very protective of their characters nowadays when it comes to merchandise, so the chances of us seeing a Sonic plush similar to these nowadays is very slim. Unless some new company does more seasonal Sonic plushes, this is probably the best we'll get, so I absolutely respect them for that. Here's the last plush in this set, and the only plush should not be a set of two, Amy Rose. This was the first ever plush of Amy, and considering that, they did a pretty nice job. Obviously, she still follows the same simplistic look of the others, but she definitely looks as accurate as she can be. The main area of this plush that makes her not as accurate as the others is definitely her face. She honestly looks a little creepy. I think it's the eyes. The whites of her eyes are huge, but then her actual eyes are really close together and not centered. Yeah. These could definitely look a lot better. Amy's muzzle isn't nearly as defined as it is on the other plushes. It still looks fine, but not as good as it probably could have. Her nose also looks pretty bad. It's very long and very thin, and doesn't look all that good from many angles. Her mouth also looks… wow. Yeah, they definitely could have made her look a lot better in the face area. What's sad though is that the face on the prototype of this plush looks a lot better than on the final plush. Amy's bangs aren't defined at all and are instead this poofy, fuzzy material. The same technique was later used on the Sonic the Fighter's Amy plush. It looks good, and helps this plush look even more unique than it already was. Amy's ears are just like Sonic's, though the insides of her ears are better sized than his. Her spikes look really good, if not a little closely spaced together, though they do accurately negate the middle spike, as as Amy doesn't have that. Her headband is made from a really nice smooth ribbon-like material, the same one used for the knots on Sonic and Tails' bouquets. It's even tied at the back, which is a detail I did not expect. Amy is wearing her green shirt, which is made from a cloth-like material, same for her orange skirt. The white neck flap of her shirt uses felt and is cut nicely, but it is a little big and could look better. Her arms are basically just T-posed, which seems to be a common theme in classic Amy merchandise, though her sleeves are cut in a way where you can see her arms, which is good, and her hands once again are 
very simplistic. The back of Amy is a bit messy. Her shirt is cut and is just glued together. Her skirt, however, is stitched, but her back spike is coming out of her skirt, which is not correct at all, and when you think about it, makes no sense. She does have her tail, though. Her shoes, while they look nice, actually aren't accurate. Classic Amy wears light blue shoes with orange laces, and she always has. Yet this plush has her in purple shoes with yellow laces. This color scheme was never shown in any artwork or anything, so I'm not sure where this comes from. Though to be fair, this piece shows Amy with pink shoes, so maybe the color of her shoes weren't exactly finalized yet. And that's Amy. Despite being so weird looking, she's the most standard out of the set. I think it's really cool that she's included here, just for the fact that we have a Sega Sonic Amy plush. I really like this Amy for how early it looks. You can just tell this is the first Amy plush. Not everything is perfect and she is super unique looking. We've gotten quite a few classic Amy plushes over the years, but only two I find really interesting. This one and the Sonic the Fighters one. The Fighters Amy is really cool because it's the only plush of her with her Pico Pico hammer, and this plush is significant not only because because it's the first ever Amy plush, but also because of how unique she looks. A lot of classic Amy plushes look really good, but also really generic. A lot of them are just like, have no fear, Amy Rose is indeed here, but there's nothing special about her. This one, however, is definitely special. And if you're a fan of Amy, you owe it to yourself to pick this plush up if you're ever given the chance. And that's the set. What an odd set this is. Trust me, as I make more videos on Sega Sonic plush sets, I'm sure I'll be saying that a lot. But you know, the thing is, this set is only strange by today's standards. Back in 1994, this was the norm. Back then, the identity of the Sonic series was far less defined. There were very few aspects of the Sonic franchise to make merchandise of. So what are you to do but base it off of anything you can? For example, this flower bouquet art of Sonic. The fact that Amy's here though does make me wonder if at one one point we were going to get a Sonic CD plush set. Maybe we could have gotten a Sega Sonic Metal Sonic plush, but honestly, you know what? I'm glad we got these guys instead. In the end, we've gotten a few Metal Sonic plushes, so him not getting a Sega Sonic plush while unfortunate overall isn't that big of a deal. However, if we never got these, we would never get plushes like them. No one nowadays is going to be like, yeah, let's make a plush of Sonic wearing a sweater, and there's no way Sega would even greenlight such a plush. I'm so glad this set was made when it could be, and the fact that this Sonic is directly based off of this artwork makes it so much cooler. I'm such a fan of these early Sega Sonic plushes. You can clearly tell their age, but they have so much early Sonic style and flair. I'll definitely have to make more videos on the other Sega Sonic plush sets as I get them, or at least on the ones I can find. While a lot of these sets are very hard to find nowadays, they're always a gem when you can get a hold of them. I absolutely do not regret buying these guys. They instantly liven up any collection, and are a perfect time capsule of the Sega Sonic era of Sonic merchandise.